We started this dig looking at this little ditch down here, but quite frankly, over the last day and a quarter, most of our concentration and excitement has been on the other site, which is a few fields away in that direction. And that's because the finds there were only a few inches below the surface. But if you look here, I mean, this is industrial scale archeology. span We haven't got down onto anything yet, have we? Haven't we? Oh yes, we have. You see that dark layer turning up there? Yeah. That's the Roman level. And I'm so excited because I was worried. I thought it could have been removed by the water that laid down the floodplain, but it hasn't. So what is this stuff that we're looking at? Well, that mass of clay above the digger bucket, that was laid down at a very thin layers, like sort of a millimeter a year, over the best part of a thousand years. And it's flood clay that's come in from the River Neen. And so it's actually buried the Roman surface intact underneath it. So actually, the quality of the archaeology might be even better than what we've been finding over there. Oh, much, much better, because there's a good chance it'll even be quite wet. Kerry! Come over here, mate. So what are you seeing on that level? What we've got is a much earlier uh, Roman surface, to, uh, well, at least one and a half, two metres below. And it's absolutely stuffed full of pottery. Wow. And that's from one sweep of the bucket. And that hasn't been broken by the bucket? No, that's all breaks. You can see the dirt on the sides there. Francis, can you see it's got all this shelly stuff in it? Yeah, it used to add shell. It, it made the pottery dry better when mm. they were making it. So what's your strategy going to be now? What I'm going to do is finish this and get up to the section there, then we'll clean it up and then we'll dig down into it. Mark, what we're looking at here, I can't even see a kill here. <laughs> no, I know. It's <laughs> a bit more ephemeral than what we've just been looking at in Phil's trench, but... What we have got here is this dense spread of bright red material. This is all the clay that's derived from the temporary dome structure that would have gone over a kiln. And we've also got a few larger bits of fired brick, which are probably lining elements of the kiln. Trench one, with its big orange concentration of burning, actually appears to be a tile kiln. Unfortunately, trench two, the one where we discovered the burials, has left us stumped. We can tell by its construction and a concentrated area of burning that it was a large industrial unit. It's just that we've got no evidence to tell us what it was used to make. But further excavation suggests that's probably because it was completely cleaned out to be reused as something else. It's just that we don't know what. It's a deep pit. It's a deep structure. Um, if it's not a water tank or um, a plunge pool, I honestly don't know what it could be. But wouldn't a, a plunge pool be part of a bathhouse complex with things like a, a warm room and a hot room and hypercourse? Yeah. And we found like one solitary piece of flue tile. Well, if it's not a plunge pool, then it's definitely some, it's designed to hold water. It's some sort of system or, or something. So all that we can say is it's probably some kind of water holding tank, some kind of system. I'm inclined to think it's more industrial than domestic because we've got so few finds, I can't really imagine that people were living here for any length of time. So, um, more problems than solutions. Oh, it looks all right. Oh, look. Yeah. We've got some pots in There's there. Definitely pots oh, hiding yeah. in there, yes. Other parts of our investigation here have been more straightforward. Thanks to some experimental archaeology, we've now established that the local clays around Stilton were perfect for the Roman pottery industry. So how do you feel that went as a firing then, Rick? Well, as a piece of experimental archaeology, I think it's been very um, successful. Yeah. We've achieved what we set out to do. We've got a range of different um, vessel forms, neem, yeah. typical neem belly forms. But you didn't lose many, did you? I, I, I think I expected there to be more broken ones than, mm. than there are. No, it's been a successful firing from that point of view. There's uh, yeah. very few breakages. I must say, I mean, that's the thing that surprised me, how few actually have you know, broken or yeah. developed faults during the firing. It's basically an intact kiln load, ready, as you say, for market. What's all... Hello, my name's John Gator. Time Team is fan-funded by Patreon. This vital support helps us to make new episodes. Joining Patreon gives you access to exclusive interviews, 3D models and masterclasses, plus lots more.